Hello and welcome to Modern Toy Fair Reviews. Today I am taking a look at the Mezco Con exclusive Gotham by Gaslight Joker. As always, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, or even better, if you've picked it up and have had a chance to actually kind of play around with it. Also, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more weekly reviews and other toy related content. But that's enough chitter chatter, let's go ahead and get at her. All right, so we're going to start with how he turned out. So on the head, we've got these nice purple rings around the eyes. You've got some skin tone near the eyebrows to kind of make it look like he's got white makeup on, which is really cool. You've got the purple lips in there. Tons of line work for like wrinkles to really add some texture. So it's not just, you know, straight up white everywhere. And then the hair is more of like a darker green. So it looks a little more Heath Ledger, a little more like dye job, a little less uh, comic-y, which is kind of cool. Flip it around, you can see where the sculpt with the hair gets a little more curly towards the back. And then for the clothing, we've got this green tie, which really kind of pops against the plain white shirt. We've got these suspenders, which actually can come down, so you can have them, like, hard day at work or actually, like, you know, up where they're supposed to be. Uh, shirt, like, the sleeves and everything. You've got the stitching around the cuffs. And then for the pants, you have this, like, kind of button and stitch work for his fly and... It looks really good. It looks like it's supposed to, like for that era. And then hands on one on the fingers, you'll notice there's some like blood stains, which is kind of cool since you know it's supposed to be like more of like a Jack the Ripper type Joker. And then on all the left hands, this is a really neat detail. Ha ha is carved into the back, which I really like. Um, I do kind of wish it was the other way because if you have him like holding someone from behind, it's upside down. But then it it, it is what it is. Again, bloody fingers. And then the green pants, when you go down, you've got a lot of dirt on the bottom, which is really cool. I really like how that turned out. Even on the shoes, he's got those, you know, old Victorian era style shoes, and those are a little dusty as well. And it goes all the way on the back of the pants. And then it's pretty plain on the back side. You do have the little, like, hole for where, like, the button connects versus, like, where the shirt is. So pretty cool figure overall. Okay, on to articulation. So head twists all the way around. You've got a little bit of tilt side to side. Uh, the head is a little bit larger and it is a separate piece, but for the most part, it feels like the neck is doing a lot of the work when it, you go like up and down. Uh, as you can see, like the top, like going up, doesn't go very far at all. Arms go about to 90, go all the way around with a little bit of hindrance from the shirt. And then no bicep swivel, but you do have the single joint elbow that goes a little bit past 90 and has the pivot. The wrist peg does go forward and back. Goes a little bit more forward than it does back and then twists all the way around. As for the ab crunch, this is the newer like slim body. So you do get some nice tilt and twist. Quite a bit of crunch forward and backward, which is nice because you've got it there in the kind of chest and at the hips. So even, yeah, twist side to side pretty well. Uh, legs can get almost 90, which is pretty nice. And then it does go all the way forward and a little bit back, nothing too crazy. And you do have double jointed knees, which is nice. And it also has a little bit of a like thigh swivel at the hip. So you can kind of get a little range out of it. And then the ankle pivot goes forward and back, kind of minimalist, just because of the type of shoes he has more than anything. And then it does twist side to side. And you can get a little bit of pivot, but nothing crazy. Again, it's mostly more of a hindrance because of the types of shoes he has on than anything else is what it kind of feels like. Okay, on to some accessories. So we have this suitcase, which has some really nice, like, beat-up old leather textures. You've got some hinges, you've got the corner protectors. On the top, you've got the latches and the um, handle. And then on the back side, you have more of that same texture, but this time it has, like, the little kind of bolts holding everything in. And then it opens to reveal all of his, uh, his we'll call it the surgical equipment uh, for his patients. So you've got all those. We'll get to more into those here in a moment. But then we do have an alternate head, which 
has that smiling face and his eyes are looking off to the side. And then we have his top hat, which is this nice green to kind of offset his purple coat, which we'll talk about here in a second. And it's really nice. It has some textures to make it look a little more beat up. So it's not just, you know, this nice neat hat for uh, this crazy guy who probably can't afford new hats all the time. And then it does fit very nicely because it's kind of molded to go around his hair. And it just kind of pops on and off. And it just, you can feel it actually kind of pop on. We do have one complete set of hands for the kind of open, like, fingers. But then everything else is singles. Like this one, we have a kind of hand over mouth, left hand with the bloody fingertips and the haha on the back, followed by like a tipping of the hat or maybe sprinkling some salt. Another left hand, uh, followed by an, a left hand that can point or even be more of like a shushing finger. And then there are some hands that can grip some of the weapons. So this one's for some of the knives. This one can hold bigger knives or even go on the briefcase handle. And then this one's actually molded shut and has a very tiny hole for some of the smaller knives. And then this one has a slit to break up the four fingers and the two sets of two. And you can kind of see it a little better there. What that is actually for is to put the uh, hook up through it, which is a real nice touch. Definitely has a really cool aesthetic when you, you set it up like that. Then we do have his glasses with that nice green tint and then the black and then they hook around the back of his ears. And then here's that hook again. You've got some really great like rust and blood effects and some detail in there. Same with this smaller like curved knife. And then we have an even smaller like thin blade. And then there's a kitchen knife again with that kind of rust and that like bloody look to it. And then this is some sort of like medical hatchet uh, followed by what I'm calling an eye socket wrench. We got some great sculpt there at the end to kind of have all the little chisel pieces. And then we have these like surgical clamps, little teeth in them and it actually opens and closes. And then there's the bone saw. So you can, you know, chop people up. It has ha 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 carved into it, which is really cool. Looks really nice with the rust. Then we have his purple coat. And this looks fantastic. I love the like dust and dirt that they have on it. And he even has like pockets, so you can put it like you have to take his hands off, but you can put like his wrists down in there and make it look like he's got his hands in his pockets. And then you have these buttons to kind of latch it all together. Which be careful because I have seen people who've pulled too tightly and ripped the buttons off, and you don't want to do that uh, for sure. Uh, we do have a green scarf to kind of make everything pop a little more. It is pretty long, but it's it's real basic. It's nothing too crazy. And of course, you can't, you know, do surgery without an apron. And this apron is definitely covered in a lot of blood splatter, which looks really cool. And it really kind of gives it a nice texture. And then you do have the wraps that go in there long enough to wrap all the way around it. And then there's the inside. Of course, you have the stand, the Joker logo. And then finally, we have these like terror cards, I'm assuming. And you've got one with a heart, a bat, and a Joker. And then flip over and you got a design on the back. Okay, quick size comparison. Here he is with the Sovereign Knight Batman, about the same height. Batman has him a little bit just because of the ears. And then we have him with the other exclusive Joker. And this one's a smidgen taller, but I think it's mostly just the hat. Uh, he's a little thinner. Uh, otherwise, the eyes and nose seem to line up pretty, pretty evenly. So he scales really well with the rest of the line, which is nice. And last up, we have the box. We've got all the logos here. We've got on the front and then on the side again you got the logos both sides and then 112 display pose and play on the top all the barcode and artist information and then the back is literally the same as the front which is kind of a big letdown and just feels a little bit lazy luckily i'm not an inbox collector so Okay, so overall, not super impressed with this figure. Uh, not, not that it's a bad figure by any means. I think what really hurt it is just not having the Gotham by Gaslight Batman to go with it. Not to mention that Joker wasn't in the original story. He didn't pop up in the Gotham by Gaslight like version of the multiverse until, what was it, like Convergence? I don't know. It was some sort of weird story they did, uh, and it showed the all the rogues gallery uh in that universe and it's cool but it, it's just not something i need 
I will also say, like, it, I feel like the packaging, like, I, I'm hoping maybe it was just because they were in a rush to make sure they had it ready for when the con would be happening. But either way, it was pretty lackluster. Like, usually there's some sort of artwork on the back. Like, I know the exclusive boxes usually aren't anything crazy, but this just feels like real, real low, like, energy going into it. Like, they kind of threw something together just to have it ready for the con that wasn't Gomez-related, which I, I appreciate because I'm not a, a Gomez fan. Like, I like some of the stuff you get with him and, like, the accessories and stuff like that and, you know, some of the costumes, but I could care less about the Gomez releases. I'm more interested in your DC or Marvel and your movie kind of related stuff, so the more we get of that, the better. But that's going to be it for this video, so please make sure to like and subscribe for more toy-related content and reviews every week. And make sure to follow us on the social media, Twitter and Instagram, at Modern Toy Fair. You can even find us over on the Reddit with you forward slash Modern Toy Fair. And don't forget to hit us up live every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv forward slash modern toy fair where me, Nate, and Jamar go over our weekly purchases and show you what toys we wasted our money on each week. So hopefully we will see you next week. Same toy time, same toy fair channel. Thank you for watching.